Amen. Good morning! Sige po, let's welcome the presence of God in this place. Sige po, palakpakan po natin ang Panginoon. Hallelujah! Wow, such a great day. Amen. Amen. And today, we have this rare privilege to have here with us our Asia-Pacific Field Director. Meaning to say, he's handling more or less uh, 10,000 churches all over Asia. Such a burden, such a privilege. Na po. And uh, he would be overseeing for, for all of those churches. And today, he's here with us, a truly a man of God. And you know what I found out? He really works so hard. And uh, when he works, he wants to get things done. <laughs> and uh, more than anything else, he's a good friend of ours. No po? And uh, please help me welcome Bishop Andrew Binda. Bishop. Amen. Put your hands together for our pastor, our national overseer for the Church of God Philippines, 630 churches, just doing an extremely important job. And the Lord is blessing the work, the services today, these services that I've been a part of, just tremendous, tremendous presence here today with us. We're so happy also to see Gigi at the front. God bless you. Put your hands together for your first lady. Amen. Gigi Velasco and Pastor AJ, who's up here, all the wonderful pastors, young pastors, all the volunteers, 120 workers, and so many thousands of volunteers that lead this great, great, great church. We're so proud. Church of God, Das Marinas. And uh, you are a success story in our movement. And everywhere we go, I brag a little bit, you know, boast a little bit about you. Amen. If that's okay. And we bring people, amen, to see and to experience this move of God. In front, we have Dr. Blaine Waltrip, who's an educator and a missiologist. Stand, Dr. Waltrip. We want to acknowledge you. And at the back, we have... We have seven others with us. Would you all stand there in the sweet spot, it's called. That's the best, the best seats in the house. Amen. We welcome you. You'll see them around. Amen. God bless you today. What a privilege it is for to have this platform to share today in this very, very special service. We had a wonderful service at the 930 and then to be back here today. Amen. God bless you. Congratulations to all who were baptized yesterday in water. Amen. And what a great blessing it was for those who were filled with the Holy Spirit as well. Put your hands together for that. Amen. And because, because of the assignment that I was given, I, I just got stuck in the book of Acts. Amen. And so today I'm bringing you back to the book of Acts, Acts chapter 3, and I want to read verses 9 and 10. Amen. Acts chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. Amen. How many of you know my beautiful wife, Valerie? She's got curly hair. She's got a killer smile. Amen. She's just beautiful. The first time I laid eyes on her, I thought, boy, I tell you, maybe this will be my future wife. And it so happened. Amen. I asked her out. She said, maybe, and maybe was good enough for me. So I pursued, amen, and we've been married 37 years. On the 18th, amen, praise God. Uh, Philippines here, you're 13 hours ahead of us. And so on the 18th of, um, of uh, November, my wife will be having a surgery. So when you get up in that morning, 13 hours ahead of her waking up that morning, that morning, you will already be praying for her, okay? So do that. She will be so encouraged to know that I've asked, amen, all of you here today and those of you who are watching, amen, on the various platforms that you will be praying for Valerie. She was diagnosed with two tiny aneurysms in her brain. And I know Lord, the Lord can fix that. Amen. So would you pray? Pray for my beautiful, sweet wife of 37 years. I'm nothing without her, lost without her. Okay, so, so all you men over here, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, turn with me to Acts chapter number 3, two verses of Scripture, 9 and 10. Amen. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Then they knew that it was he who sat begging arms at the beautiful gate of the temple. 
And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. The message is entitled this afternoon, amen. Now what? Amen. Now what? You know, by the time you get to this story here, the healing of this lame man at the gate called Beautiful, there were some amazing things that took place in the book of Acts. The book of Acts chapter number one, the Lord ascended into the heavens before he left this earth. He gave to his disciples his final instructions, the last words. Someone has said the last words of any individual are, is like a window to his, sail, to his soul. He will, he, will, he will speak that which is most important, that which is most important on his mind. And he gave his disciples what we know as the Great Commission in Matthew 28, amen, 18 through 20. He said, amen, go into all the world and preach the gospel. And then we come to Acts chapter 1 and verse number 8. And he said, wait in Jerusalem, amen. Not many days hence and you shall receive, amen, the Holy Spirit after which the Holy Spirit, he said, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And he told, gave his disciples instructions in Acts chapter number two, the day of Pentecost, according to verse number one was fully come and suddenly the Bible says amen they all were filled they were with one accord in one place and suddenly it says there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them divided divided tongues as a fire and one sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. 120 men simply following, men and women simply following the instruction, instructions of Jesus. Hallelujah. And 10 days hence after they were praying and after they were tarrying and persevering in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit was poured out. We call it the anointing. We call it the unction. We say that the anointing makes the difference and what a difference it made in the lives of these disciples who before they meant the ascension of Jesus at his, at his burial, at his crucifixion, they were running for their lives. They were lying. They were cursing. They were swearing. They were, amen, men of violence. They... Peter pulled out his sword and, 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 and slashed the air of Malchus. And we see these things happening. Judas committing suicide. Amen. All this happening, but after Pentecost. Hallelujah. What a difference it made in their lives. And the Bible tells us that, the Holy, that, that, that these men, they received that power. Don't you know today that that power came to these men? And there is because there is a mandate and there is a mission for every one of us to fulfill. Hallelujah. And I've said this morning in the early service, the, the Lord revealed it unto me that we are filled to finish. Hallelujah. We're filled to fulfill. Amen. And as Bishop Velasco said at the end of the service, we are filled to finish strong. Hallelujah. And when you come to a place like this and you've received, amen, from the Lord, all that he's already given unto us and you turn your cups up high and you receive from the Lord. Amen. You come to this place and you realize that there is power. There is a great experience of his power and this phenomenon of the Holy Spirit's presence. 
important whenever that happens, whenever you're in that place and you receive from the Lord, it bathes you in His presence. You're refreshed, hallelujah. You feel clean, amen. There are times when He moves with dynamo, with such power, hallelujah, that you can't stand still and you have to shout out His name, but there are times when He moves like a gentle breeze. Oh, glory be to God. And he fills your soul and your, your heart. And the Bible tells us that these men, Peter and the apostles, freshly filled with the Holy Spirit, Peter stood up that day. They were accusers on that day after they heard these men speaking in different languages. Accusers who said they must be drunk. But Peter stood up that day and Peter confirmed the word of the Lord and Peter said this was that which was spoken by the prophet Joel in Joel chapter 2 verse 28. In the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Hallelujah. Your old men shall see dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. What you find right here is a God who was just keeping his word. Don't you know that God is not slack concerning his promises like some men count slackness. Hallelujah. But he's faithful to fulfill his word and you can take it to the bank like we like to say Jesus Christ amen is the same yesterday today and forever and he was just keeping his word God was just doing he was just fulfilling his word if God said it it will come to pass it doesn't matter how long your waiting period has been. Hallelujah. I don't care who says it will not happen. If God says it, it shall come to pass. Peter said, God was just keeping his word. This is no big deal. Hallelujah for the Lord. It's what God said he was going to do. And so he has just gone and done it. Hallelujah. He poured out his spirit. Amen. Upon his people. These people. They were having this phenomenal experience on the day of Pentecost. And you know, I thank God for the Holy Spirit. I would want to do what I'm doing had it not been for the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Had it not been for the anointing. Amen. I would not do what I am doing today. This is a calling. But I thank God that He just didn't call me. Hallelujah. But He filled me with His Holy Spirit. And I feel that anointing in this place today. My God, when they were singing those songs and we were lifting holy hands. Amen. I just know that God's power is here. And He's here to fill you afresh and to fill you anew. Hallelujah. Because He wants you to be about His business today God is pouring out his spirit in these last days I know that there are doubters and I know that there's some hallelujah who don't believe it but I thank God now I've got a daughter who is a medical doctor and I've got another one who is in IT and I have a son who is in business and finance and he said he went into that field because he wants to manage his sister's money and they're good and they're accomplished but hear me out today day. Hallelujah. Amen. You can take this whole world but give me Jesus. I rather them have Jesus. Hallelujah. Than silver and, and gold. I love it that they have a good education and I paid for it. Amen. Oh glory be to God. But I thank God, hallelujah, that they are filled with the Holy Spirit. I thank God that they have this Pentecostal experience. And I thank God because He has promised unto them that they shall prophesy. Oh, glory be to God. They shall dream dreams today and they shall be used mightily. And when I see this wave of young people at Church of God, Das Marinas, I know that the church is in good hands. Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. But it is just not in the fact that you are young and you have your life ahead of you 
Amen. I place that by I place that and I, uh, hallelujah, base that on this promise in Joel 2.28. I will pour out my spirit. And what we need more than anything today, hallelujah, is a fresh flow of the Holy Spirit of God who will fill us. So I say, come Lord Jesus, come in this place and fill us with the Holy Ghost all over again. I thank God for the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost equips us. I thank God for the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost enables us. I thank God for the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost empowers us. Hallelujah. Amen. All of that there. For what? Amen. The empowerment, the enablement, the equipping. Hallelujah. So that we can fulfill the task that he has given unto us. Because as our former general overseer has said, the Holy Spirit didn't come just for your enjoyment or your entertainment. The Holy Spirit came for your employment. Oh, hallelujah. So that you and I can be busy about the master's business every morning. We need to thank God and ask him to fill us again. Hallelujah. With new opportunity, with fresh power. Oh, with the Holy Ghost so that we can represent him well. I thank God for the Holy Ghost. I thank God for what he does. Hallelujah. I thank God for his indwelling presence in my life. I thank God that he never leaves me nor forsake me, that he goes with me to the ends of the earth. Oh, hallelujah. I thank God that he has gifted me to do what he has called me to do. Now, after this visitation that we've had over these, especially these last two days, after the visitation that we've had in this worship service, we have been bathed in the Holy Ghost. After we have experienced this service today in His presence, worshiping God and celebrating the goodness of God in His life and His faithfulness towards us, I simply want to ask this question, now what? What? In other words, when we leave from here, what now? What next? What do we do? Where do we go? Not just to our homes. What do we do with what we have received? All this training, all this graduation exercises, all this good preaching, this great worship. Now that Pentecost has come, I simply ask this question of us. What now? Hallelujah. We see what Peter does. He stood up that day. He preached. 3,000 souls got saved. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost filled it was Holy Ghost filled preaching right there. He preached, amen, with conviction. He preached like a man who really tr truly believed the word of God. God help us today that we preach so that somebody's mind can be changed. That we preach so that there can be a renewal of the mind. We preach so that sinners will come to repentance. We preach. Hallelujah so that souls will be saved. 3,000 got saved on that day. What a formula. They prayed for 10 days. Peter preached a sermon. I don't know how long that sermon was. It, according to the content and the transcript, it wasn't that long. Amen. 3,000. They give an altar call. 3,000 souls got saved. We do the opposite today. We want to pray for 10 minutes. We want to preach for hours. Amen. And these days, we don't even give an altar call. Hallelujah. And that's why our altars are so barren. Amen. And we see the results so often. Hallelujah. He preached that day. 3,000 souls got saved. What is God doing? Amen. God did an amazing work. You go to the end of Acts chapter number 2 and you see a, an amazing church. A church that believed in equipping and in discipling and in fellowship. Amen. A church, amen, who believed in worshiping. You can preach a great sermon out of that outline that I just gave you there in Acts 2, 42 through 46. But then 
Acts chapter 2 is such a beautiful passage, verse number 47. And now we come to Acts chapter number 3 and we find it's just another day. And Peter and John, they were going up to, they were going up to the temple. And as they got to that temple, they encountered a man who, who lay every day at that temple gate for the last 40 years or so. Amen. That man was lame and he was asking for arms. He could not walk. Amen. A beautiful gate. Hallelujah. And all he does every day is just sit there and ask for some alms. I could hear him as he heard the footsteps coming, approaching. Amen. And he would look up and he will muster every ounce of energy in his body. And he will stretch forth his cup like this. And he says, help for the poor. Help for the poor. Every day, same routine. Imagine going home and turning over his money cup and seeing the result of it. And perhaps it was a bad day. There was not too much there. Amen. But this day, freshly filled with the Holy Spirit, Peter and John looked at that man. Hallelujah. The Bible says that Peter said to him, Look on us. And Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I unto thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Peter stretched forth his hand and gave him a lift. Amen. And immediately his feet and his ankle bones received strength. And he began to walk. Then walking, hallelujah. And he ran, jumping and leaping right into the temple. He was forbidden for entering the temple. But this day, nothing was going to stop him. Has the Lord done something for you? Then we give him praise. Hallelujah. When the Lord does something for you, you give him praise. Amen. Hallelujah. He's leaping. He's jumping. He's praising God. And the Bible says that this man who had just been healed in the temple, he could not. Hallelujah. According to the Levitical law, he was not allowed in the temple. But now, nothing was going to stop him. He's praising God. And when all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized that he was the man who used to sit at the gate called Beautiful. I don't know about you, but I look at my life and I could tell you I used to be such and such. I could look at my family's history and I could tell you they used to be Hindus who worshiped foreign gods. I could tell you, amen, what they used to do. I could tell you that they drank. I could tell you, amen, that they partied. But ah, that what that is what I used to be. You can look at your life, hallelujah, and what a testimony you have today because you're no longer that person. You are a new creation. All things have become new. The old man has been buried. Hallelujah. Can you give God praise because you're not? You used to be now that you know the story. Hallelujah. Now that you've had this experience, now what? Amen. Now what? If you're going to be the people of God, the people that God has called you to be, filled with the Holy Spirit, if we're to finish the Great Commission, first of all, we must make prayer a priority. Amen. You would have thought that Peter and John, having spent 10 days in the temple praying, now they got what they wanted, the Holy Ghost. Amen. You would have thought, ah, forget about praying. Hallelujah. Don't have to pray anymore. But here they are going at three in the afternoon, showing up in the temple, not for worship, not for praise, but for prayer. Hallelujah. And I submit to you, you 120, amen, on staff here and you thousands, four, three, four thousands, volunteers, amen. Hallelujah. We have no business showing up for a service unless, until we have prayed. We need to pray until something happens. Those of us who are called to preach, may God help us, amen. May God wake us up in the middle of the night and speak to us. May we wake up early in the morning and seek his face so that he can give us a fresh word how many of you know that God still answers prayers God still answers the prayers of his people how many of you know that prayer still works it worked then and it works now hallelujah hallelujah you cannot just name it and claim it amen you have to pray for it today 
Hallelujah. God can change your situation. Amen. God can deliver you from every circumstance. You need to learn to call upon Him. The Bible says, many are the afflictions of the righteous. But don't stop reading there. He says, the next line says, the Lord delivers him out of them all. The Bible says, in this world you will have tribulation. But it doesn't stop there. It says, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. The Bible says, if we suffer with him, we will reign with him. I'm here to testify that he never, he never left me. Oh, there are times when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He's never left me. Oh, glory be to God. He was with me. He answered every time I called on his great name. And he still answers prayer today. You've heard this before so many times. Hallelujah. But may I remind you that we've got to maintain prayer as a priority. Number one. Hallelujah. It's not an option. Amen. It is a priority. It is top of the list. I know for sure today that every woman would want to be married. Not just to a handsome man. That's all right, but to a prayerful man. Hallelujah. Because you know praying men don't beat up on their wife. Hello somebody. Amen. A prayerful man, hallelujah, loves his wife, loves his family. A prayerful man loves his church. He loves his God today. We need more praying people. The Bible says in, in 2 Corinthians 7 verse 14, If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray. Hallelujah. Seek my face turn from their wicked ways then will I hear from heaven I'll forgive their sins I'll heal their land we need to maximize prayer as a priority and then secondly we need to, need to minister to people on the outside on the fringe hallelujah this point number two here talks about our responsibility we're responsible for those outside now picture this, 40 years this man was sick, lame, sitting at that gate. Gate called beautiful. This gate was 70 feet tall, was made out of bronze. Imagine when the Palestine sun hit it in the afternoon especially. It was not just called beautiful because they just had to call it that. It was beautiful because... It was that beautiful. It was splendid. It was a, it, 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 the, the sunshine will hit it and, and it was pleasing to the eyes. But you will notice that at the gate call, beautiful. For 40 years, there is a man lame sitting at that gate. And I submit to you, amen. Or beautiful worship or singing or preaching, all of it. Amen. We nullify. When we fail to minister to people at the point of their need. A beautiful gate. But ugly religion. Hallelujah. And so I submit to you today. Amen. That we can nullify all the worship. We can nullify the good preaching. And the good singing and praise. And even prayer. Until we look at the rest of the world as our responsibility. And we minister to those on the outside. Hallelujah. It's not good enough that we, are, we have a seat around the table. How about those outside of the gate? And we must do everything without our power. Ah, this is a case of bad religion. Seated right outside the gate called beautiful point of responsibility hallelujah they see us going to church they know that we're Christians they expect something from us every Christian hallelujah you will notice that Peter and John came up to this man and Peter said 
Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I unto thee. Didn't have money. I thought about that and I thought, what if they had some rupees or some pesos? Hmm. I just remembered where I am. <laughs> Last week I was in Nepal. They have rupees over there. This is pesos over here. If they had some pesos, if they have some shillings and some pins and some dollars, perhaps Peter would have fished in there. He said, Johnny boy, give me some money over here. Don't you see this man wants some? Give him some money and went about their way. But their lack became this man's blessing. Hallelujah. And so they went after silver and gold, but such as I have in the name of Jesus Christ. They gave him Jesus that day. They gave him what he needed most and he had his healing. And I say to you today, I submit to you today that we all have a such. What is your such today? It not, may not be dollars and cents. Amen. It, must, it may be that gift, that smile. Hallelujah. That you have today. What is your such as I have? Hallelujah. We need to reach out to these people in need. And then thirdly and finally, we need to maximize. What now? What next? Where do we go from here? We need to maximize our power to produce possibilities. Hallelujah. The Lord have blessed us with this great power. Filled us with this Holy Spirit. Peter, this great man of God, who had been walking with Jesus, freshly filled of the Holy Ghost, he said, silver and gold have I none. Watch this next line. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. I don't have much money, but such as I have, I give unto thee. Here is what I've got. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Hallelujah. I have that name that is above every other name. I have that Holy Ghost inside of me. You've got to do something. Hallelujah. You've got something that money cannot buy in the name of Jesus. Do you know that name today? Hallelujah. How many of you go on with your life without that name today? This man was there for 40 years. It took 40 years for them to introduce him to Jesus. Hallelujah. How long has it been since you talked to somebody about Jesus? You know somebody that sit right next to you behind that cubicle at work? When was the last time you told them about Jesus? When have you invited them even to come to, to the church? Amen. Here this man laying at the temple gate called beautiful. I don't have any money. But such as I have, give I unto thee. And the next line says his ankle bones, his feet gained strength. And he started to walking, started to walk. When you call on the name of Jesus, hallelujah, something is bound to happen. When you call on that name, something is going to shift in the atmosphere. And in a few minutes, I'll give you that opportunity to call upon that name. The name that is above every other name. I'll call on you to bow at that name. Hallelujah. Your hearts before him. Your knees before him. Say the name. The name of Jesus today. There's power in that name. Oh hallelujah. There's victory in that name. There is deliverance in that name. You said that. You say that simple. I'm here to tell you that same name. That raised Jesus from the dead lives inside of us today. And you can have that same power. I still believe, hallelujah, in signs and wonder. I still believe wonders. I still believe that in the name of Jesus, the sick can be healed, demons will be cast out. And I still believe that there is victory over any adversary today. Still say the name. So would you stand with me today and begin to speak the name, the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That man stood up, but he just wasn't satisfied just standing there. Hallelujah. He received strength and he realized that feet, feet's made for walking. Hallelujah. And then he realized, but these feet can do more and something within his soul 
shouting and leaping and praising God Almighty. Look back at your life today. See how good the Lord has been to you. When this service ends, ministry begins. Hallelujah. Lift your hands towards heaven. Worship Him today. Worship Him today. And this altar is open to anyone, hallelujah, who would like to come. I invite you to come and meet with Jesus at this altar here today. Would you come? Speak the name of Jesus.